back USG. We are in the kitchen again. We are up to so many good things and we are playing with our sourdough discard. As you can see here on your right hand side, we have a couple of these jars in our fridge and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with it because we have been doing a couple of recipes. Now some of these things I test run off camera to see A, if it comes out good, B, if my family likes, because I'm not going to recreate something for you guys that my family does not like. And sometimes it's okay to do things on camera and show you guys flops and flips and all that good stuff because it's good content. And sometimes I just wing not to do it. Now, up front, these are recipes that I recreate that are recipes that belong to other people and sometimes I may tag them sometimes I don't those things get a little finicky because I sometimes don't know if these recipes belong to these people that I look because sometimes these people are recreating other people's recipes so sometimes I will take the time and dig through these people to see if they are tried and true recipes of them and sometimes I sometimes just don't bother so it's a sticky situation but anywho it's had to put that disclaimer here because it is a rough road out there but anywho now this I have been doing many 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 times because this is a game changer for us now I'm still perfecting sourdough bread in itself I haven't found a recipe that works now I have been hearing through TikTok because that's my new thing <laughs> that even though you follow somebody's recipe the sourdough starter can be finicky to your humidity and to your zone and all this and all that so also the sourness to it is also to your taste so I have been doing a couple of loaves and I feel that the grams of starter that I put into my loaves, I maybe have to decrease. But anyways, that's a whole other video in itself. What we are doing today is sourdough discard bread loaf. <laughs> Mouthful in itself, right? Now this, my family loves and I have been doing a lot to the point that I don't even have to buy bread in the store amen right so one of the many many pluses i'm gonna call it that of this is that this has a discard now a discard is just i guess i don't know if you want to call it inactive yeah we're gonna call it inactive because this sits in the fridge and once you take it out you have to you know use yeast to kind of you know bring it um i don't know if it's back to life listen i don't know the terminology to any of this because i'm new but it needs i guess a boost <laughs> so this is why we have to use uh yeast um to help it um you know rise and i'm okay with that uh, I mean, I have an autoimmune disease, so this is why, you know, I'm dabbling into these. I probably shouldn't be using yeast. I don't eat too much, you know, bread as it is anyway, but this bread is delicious and it's really good when I do eat it. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this recipe because I've been, you know, giving you kind of a little backstory on why we've been doing what we've been doing. But my husband likes it. I like it. Even my daughter actually likes this. So the recipe that I am following is off of TikTok, if um, I already have not said it. And the recipe goes as follow. Now I do tweak it, not making it my own, but I just do tweak it a little bit. The recipe goes as follow. It's 3.5 cups of all-purpose flour. She uses one cup of whole wheat flour. I'm going to be using one cup of bread flour. And as you can see here, I'm using King Arthur flour. You can use whatever flour you choose to use. Mine's is all um, mine's is unbleached on both of them. We are going to use three quarter cups of warm water, and you're going to be using that twice. Two 
teaspoons of yeast, one teaspoon of sugar or honey, whatever you want to use to sugar it up or to sweeten it up, half a cup of a sourdough discard, two tablespoons of honey, and that's going to be at the end so you can put a nice um, sweet glaze or sugary glaze on top of your bread once it's done baking two tablespoons of softened butter one teaspoon of salt and that is all your ingredients so we're going to go ahead and turn you guys around so we can go ahead and start we are going to be starting by blooming our yeast in the three quarters of warm water that we already have measured out in our measuring cup so let's go ahead and turn you guys around and let's get this started all right so i have a fork in here because we're gonna uh, use that to aid in mixing the yeast up that I have right over here. We're gonna put three quarters of water right in here. It's nice and warm. The yeast that I have right here, I usually keep my yeast in the freezer. Right before I know that I'm going to be using it, I switch it over to the fridge and then I take it out. So it is going to be two teaspoons to one teaspoon of sugar I'm gonna reach over here have my sugar in a big tote so I don't mix yeast I'm just gonna go ahead and use the other side and we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up so the sugar and the yeast can go ahead and activate. Now I am mixing this into my KitchenAid mixing bowl because we are going to be using our stand-up mixer so we can mix this dough bowl. So now I'm gonna use the aid of my iPad and tell Siri to put um, a five minute marker because it's gonna take five minutes for this yeast to bloom and while that happens I am going to go ahead and combine my bread flour and my all-purpose flour so let's give this five minutes to rest and we will be right back all right so while we wait for the yeast and sugar mixture to bloom we're gonna go ahead and mix the flour and the salt so let's hope that I have enough here. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and have to do a refill. So for the all-purpose flour, we need a three and a half. So I have the cup here. And the important thing with this is you don't wanna pack it down. So you just wanna fill and just level it out. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna probably need a refill. That's two. I'm coming down to the wire, guys. That can be three. Let's see. I might get it. That's three and a half. So I'm going to have to refill for the next time. And we need one cup of bread flour. There we go. And one teaspoon of salt. Here we use Redmond's Real Salt and fine sea salt trying to get a trace minerals anywhere that we can and the reason why I like to mix it got a little extra there <laughs> the only reason why I like to mix it in a bowl here separately is just because I kind of like to incorporate the salt a little bit um, on the side so I'll just you know if you want to get a whisk get a whisk I just you know go loosely with a fork and just kind of you know just type kind of try to incorporate the salt here you know it might be just a me thing but I just take the extra step you don't have to the way that she does it on TikTok is she just throws everything you know right into the bowl and she doesn't bother dirtying another bowl each one to their own right <laughs> it really doesn't matter you can do what you want your kitchen this is what I've done ever since I started doing this bread recipe and it works for me 
the bread is delicious and the crumb is incredible it's not too fluffy and it's not too dense it's perfectly right in the middle so i think our yeast has bloom so we are ready for the next step which is incorporating this over there at that point i do actually dump all of this into the kitchenaid uh, mixing bowl i don't add it gradually so we're going to go ahead and move to that uh next step i'm going to go ahead and move into that bowl switch you guys over into that gear over there and kind of clean up a little bit this mess so i'll meet you guys in that angle all right so I'm going to go ahead and take off the dough hook real quick. All right, so this is what it's looking like. If you can see in there, the yeast has a bloom really nicely. I'm going to make sure that this is on here nice and secure <laughs> because last time, oh man, I made this recipe. This bowl was dancing. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it was doing. I don't know if it was dancing reggae or what it was doing, but it was in there. All right, so we no longer need that fork. And I'm literally just going to go ahead and just dump all of this in there. And yes, it is intense, but that's what we do. I mean, she does the same thing in that TikTok video. So guess what? I'm going to do the same. So all of it went in. I'm going to put that in the sink. I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce my dough hook on here lock it in lock the machine down and um i usually keep this i mean mines go all the way up to speed 10 i usually keep this at about two i don't increase it any more than four and it lives happy there so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And we're just gonna let it be. The next step here is, is to start introducing more warm water. This is the uh, second helping, yes, that's what I'm gonna call it, of water. This, so the second three quarters of water that you are going to be introducing to the um, dough ball. So it can start forming that dough ball so this is what we're going to be living at until this dough ball forms completely um until until it starts kind of coming away from this ball so um so we're going to incorporate everything into this bowl starting from the water to the softened butter which will be two tablespoons to the honey and then the half a cup of the sourdough discard. So I'm going to let this chill out here for just a little bit so it can incorporate that water mixture and the yeast and the sugar. And then I'm going to start adding the water. In the interim, I'm going to cut up the two tablespoons of butter and start measuring out the half a cup of sourdough discard. All right, so this is looking nice and crumbly, as you guys can see from the view that you guys have. So I'm going to start incorporating some of the water so I can start picking it up. can start hearing a machine actually start changing the noise like it's struggling <laughs> and you can start seeing the consistency of the mixture change once I add the sourdough discard, the sourdough discard, you know, starter discard, it starts getting into like a sticky, gooey 
mess in here. And I wish there was a better way for me to do this, but I haven't found a better way. I don't know if this is too short or what it is. You guys will see it. And I, I hope that you guys in the comments section can give me recommendations of how to do this better. Uh, or if there's a way. But my dough wall, once it starts forming, it starts like protruding, I guess is the word, out of here. And I, I just don't know. So please, in the comment sections, let me know if I'm doing something wrong. is looking of the water. We got a little bit left. I guess the key with this is patience, right? Add some over here. I feel like this hasn't gotten love. See a lot of like raw flour still at the bottom over here. Alright, that was the last of it. I'm gonna go ahead and add the butter now in the last two times that I've done this instead of the two tablespoons of butter that she's been adding I have actually been adding three and it's been delicious and I added just like this it's been out of the fridge for a little bit so I don't bother like you know breaking it up into smaller chunks I have a little piece still left on the knife so you see how the bread is starting, well, it's not bread yet, but the dough is starting to kind of like protrude out. I don't know what that means, so I'm a little confused. My sink is here in front of me, as you can see, so I have the joys of being able to put my uh, dishes right there. <laughs> so the bowl is starting to form. But it scares me because as you can see, I mean, I, I don't know if that's a good sign because it's starting to pull everything from the walls of the bowl, which is good. But sometimes it kind of creeps out of here. So I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be doing, but I go along with it. So now I'm going to start adding two tablespoons of honey now mind you you know i'm new to all of this this is new territory to me so i would appreciate being schooled in the comments if i'm doing anything wrong please you see how it comes out now when i see it when i see it do that i will stop the machine and i would push it down and make it start over all right so the last thing is the sourdough discard and it's half a cup and that's what i have here and look at it it had a little bit of hooch on top i actually threw it out Oh, 
I spilled a little bit. So for this one, I'm actually gonna stop it. I'm gonna lift the hook. I'm actually gonna pour it in. I made a little bit of a mess, but when is it not a mess in USG in the kitchen? I'm not cooking if I don't make a mess. That's what I say all the time. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the Advantage now, and I'm gonna go ahead and just press that down. And hopefully I can stick the hook right in the middle. There we go. Lock it, and at two. All right, and this is where the fun starts. <laughs> All right, at this point, I'll go ahead and raise it. But it scares me to raise it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. But I feel like this is the only way that I would actually get some results. As you can see, as you guys can see, since I did raise it, and I'm at, I think, between four and six right now, so I guess five, um, the ball is actually starting to form, and everything is pulling away from the wall. If it wasn't for that, I'd be here all day. And ain't nobody got that time. Now, I'm not a huge bread maker besides this, guys. And this scares me to see the machine doing this. I think it's going to jump at me. <laughs> But I guess this is normal. Because I've seen people on YouTube that leave it here for a while. But my instinct tells me that the minute everything is away from the bowl, the, you know, that's it. It doesn't need to be needed anymore. And I am almost there. This looks good. So let's go ahead and lift up the hook. This is really nice and soft. Pulled away from the hook beautifully. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's always that's always hard. So this is what it looks like. The walls of this bowl are very nice and clean. This dough is really, really nice and soft. So now we're gonna go ahead to our flat surface on the other side over here, nice and clean so surface. Clean it, you know, while you guys are watching this rock and roll over there. And we're just gonna go ahead and just, I mean, I don't have my hand kneading techniques to the T, because like I told you guys, this is new to me. But we're gonna hand knead it for a little bit. And then we are going to put it in a greased bowl, glass, metal, 
your kitchen, your choice. Um, and you can grease it however you want. Um, butter flavor, uh, non-flavored olive oil, avocado oil, spray, butter, whatever it is that you want to do. And then you're going to let it rest and rise. That first rise is going to be for two hours. <laughs> Long rise. So let's go ahead and knead this. All right, right into the sink this goes because we just piling up dishes over there. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and just, you know, like I said, my kneading, you know, I've seen people always say push and pull and push and pull, whatever it is. Listen, I got two hands and that's what I'm going to do it with. And this really does not need to be worked that much because it is soft, it is nice and pliable. And I think that if I was to do too much to it, I think it'll make it rough. Um, I don't know if that's the way it works, but this is nice and um, I don't want it to dry out. So at this point it's just trying to just make it into a nice little ball which i've kind of already kind of gotten it into it um and i'm just gonna just leave it right there <laughs> literally so i have my bowl right here um it's pretty big as you can see i'm going to be using some pam um and the only reason why i'm using this is I don't know if you can hear it. There's practically nothing in it, and I need it out of my pantry. So I'm just trying to just literally at this point just waste it. Um, and it's rich in butter taste. And this has butter, so it goes well with it. I don't need anything neutral right now because it is what it is. I'm just going to plop it right in the middle, as you can see there. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the top of it just a little bit because like I said, <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of it. And as you can see, there's nothing there. I'm literally spraying air, so it is what it is. And I'm okay with that because now that's trash. Well, recycle, not trash. Live in a house, so we recycle. Now these little things, not a shower cap, but it looks like it. I don't have an Amazon storefront. Trying to get one. Can't wait till I can. But we're working on it. <laughs> if I could link them, I would. Um, but these things are the best things in the world. Because I was using saran wrap and cling like it's nobody's business. Now, don't get me wrong. Those things are amazing. I'll still use them if I have to. But this fits over this like it's nobody's business. And it lets it rise too. And if you're worried about it sticking, baby, just spray the inside of this as well and you don't even got to worry about that but i'm going to be in the kitchen all day so you know because you got to do what you got to do right you got to cook dinner you got to watch this you got to cook other stuff so it is what it is don't even worry about it um so i'm going to watch this rise and i'm also going to put a timer on right you know echo timer for two hours and it is what it is two hours starting now see there you go you got your reminder and you know you just watch it and it is what it is so we're going to put this here for two hours once it is two hours i'll show you what we got to do next but i'll also let you know in advance we're going to punch it down and then we're going to cut it in half and then we're going to put it into our little tins here now mines are metal i would prefer glass but this is the season that i'm in <laughs> um and then we're going to put them in the oven to bake them at 390 for about 25 to 30 minutes. But I'll show you that process when we get to it. But other than that, we are at first rise and I'll see you in two hours for you to be split seconds, but I'll see you guys in two hours uh, to show you what we do next. But other than that, this dough ball looks amazing and this bread is gonna be delicious. See you in a few. So it's been a little bit more than two hours. Got busy, life. So here we are. Here's what the dough is looking like. I shook it, so it went down a little bit. Didn't stick to this because I actually spray this and it has all these bubbles. 
in it. This dough is beautiful. So, hands are clean, surface is clean. So we're gonna go ahead and just, I like to do just one punch, just to kind of deflate it. And we're just gonna let it rock. Got one of these cans, again, rich in butter taste. Doesn't have much. And we're just gonna go ahead and spray our tin. And we're just gonna let it rock on the side over here. Just getting it ready. Amazing. Set those to the side. Got this ready as well, because we gotta split this dough in half. And this dough is gonna slide right out, because remember, it has been oiled on the bottom. And we're just gonna cut it literally almost in half. We're gonna try our best. I don't think measurement is the key. We're not weighing this. We're keeping it to ourselves. Right down the middle. Set this one to the side over here. We're not rolling this out or anything. It's kind of like what I've seen with sourdough, what they call laminating it. Um, but yes and not. So if you want, you can do one of these just to stretch it out, whatever works for you. I actually like to just take my fingers and kind of lightly just press it out, encourage it out a little bit like that. It smells delicious, by the way. And kind of just encourage it this way. For me, it really doesn't matter, like, you know, the thickness on the size, like an inch, two inches, half an inch, a quarter, really doesn't matter. Bread is bread. And, you know, we're doing this so we can do the second rise. This one's inside. All right. So I do that. And then we go into what I like to call like a burrito fold. have it semi like that. I like to take this one and fold it a little bit just like that and fold it like that and then pull it a little bit just like that and then roll it up like that and then I'll bring it to me and then kind of just pinch seams if it's possible just like that, just to make sure that it doesn't pop open, but this is gonna go down. I'll bring my tin foil over here, or my tin pan, that's gonna go down. And there we have our first one. Set that on top of my stove, and we're gonna repeat the same thing with this one again if you want to use gravity which as you can see it's not going to move much which is why i just rather just use my fingers you really don't have to press down too much because this dough is so pliable and so nice and soft that it's not like you need a rolling pin you don't need none of that it's it's not one of these those kind of doughs literally just it's like massaging but not even because it's not like a deep tissue massage because if you go too hard you can see that you can kind of actually like you know tear it so you don't want that this process happens fairly fairly quickly as you can see, we moved on quickly with that one. One fold, two folds, bring it down a little bit to me just to stretch it out and turn your burrito in, bring it back down to yourself and just pinch, pinch, pinch. As you can see, pinch, pinch, pinch. 
I like to tuck these in if you can. Bring the tin back. Turn the seams inward and right in there. And now at this point, if you want, you can drape a towel, a kitchen towel, a cheesecloth towel, whatever it is that you guys want to do. Put it right over that. I tend to use this. It does eventually fit over both of them. If you want to use just one, you can do so. Um, I find it a little wasteful. So eventually what I do is, because I end up tossing them, I end up just taking this I end up just taking this seam right here and kind of just like ripping it and um, I do it on both sides and I end up covering both of them um, I put it behind me because my radiator is actually underneath that side and we're gonna put it for the second rise the second rise is for an hour after that hour is over then we're going to go to the oven at 390 for 25 to 30 minutes and it's all depending on your oven or until it is a light and golden brown on the top so we're going to go for an hour for second rise i'll see you guys in a few so it's been about an hour and 20 minutes this is what they are looking like so they might be a little overproof but it's okay no big deal I have my oven already preheated at 390 degrees and they are going to go in this is what the first loaf is looking like maybe a hair of a crack right there but that's probably where an air bubble was at and it popped same thing happened to this one but I'm not too overly concerned I'm gonna put them in the oven like I already stated at 390 and they're gonna go for 25 to 30 minutes. I've aired at 25, more than 30, but it all depends. Your oven is going to be different. Your oven is your oven and you know it best. So we're gonna pop them in. I'm hoping that they will be done for when dinner is done. The last time I made these, one loaf was done literally the same night that I made it and it was done with dinner. So we will see. Um, I'm going to also reserve, I think I have, no, I have one tablespoon here. So I'm probably going to have to cut another tablespoon of butter and I'm going to put away the uh, rest of the butter. I was hoping to make more sourdough recipes today, but I got kind of busy. It is what it is, but I'm going to reserve maybe one tablespoon or two probably two and some honey so I can melt it in the microwave so I can drizzle or brush it on actually on top when it comes out of the oven but I will bring you guys back when we are at that step all right guys so this is what they look like I actually left them in for the full 30 minutes at 390 so they've been sitting here actually for about five minutes they're still very uh, cool to the touch. I went ahead and melted two tablespoons of butter with, I don't know, maybe one tablespoon of honey. I didn't measure it, so I was just eyeballing it. I have a brush here, uh, rubber, silicone, one of those things. We're going to go ahead and actually take them out of the um, pan and put it on a plate so I can go ahead and brush on the butter honey mixture because it's easier like that and it prevents the sticky mess on the pan i just wanted to show you guys what they look like upon coming out of the oven all right so they're hot <laughs> all right invert it and this is what the bottom looks like crust is nice it's spongy oh look at that all right I'm gonna put the other one right on top invert it that's what the bottom of the other one looks like spongy it smells amazing all right let's get rid of these guys it's almost dinner time here in USG 
So, got a nice load of dishes going on over there in the sink. <laughs> Making some steak tonight. And this bread, oh, it's going to go good with that. All right, so we have it here. There's really no science to this. And some people just like to do the top. I like to do the whole thing. I mean, minus the bottom, obviously. But I like to cover all around. See these little booties? <laughs> Those are so good. I think that's just uh, probably because I didn't either tuck it too well or I let it overproof a little bit too much. But it's okay. It's all good eating. So I'm going to finish this off. And I'll show you what the end product looks like at the end. And I will cut into one of these loaves so I can show you guys the crumb. Alright guys, look at that. Beautiful. Let's give you guys a little tour tour. <laughs> Gorgeous. Oh my god. It's like the glaze of heaven. It look like donuts. But I promise you that if you let this rest... It doesn't look this shiny. Um, I usually like to leave this out in my microwave uh, so it can totally totally rest and cool down until tomorrow and then at that point I'll put it like in Ziploc baggies and put it in my fridge. I'll slice one, leave one whole and then once one is gone then the other one gets sliced. But for the sake of the video I'm going to actually slice into one. You're not supposed to but that's what we are going to do just to show you guys the crumb. So let me just get myself a bounty because since it is currently um, full or you know overlaid with melted butter and honey, I don't want like a sticky mess. All right, we are going to do this guy right here. Oh my God, look at that, look at that. Oh yes, still shot right there. <laughs> All right, let's get ourselves a knife. Um, I don't know where my bread knife is at. <laughs> have to go look for that. So probably a chef knife from up here. No, nope, that's not my chef knife. <laughs> where did I put it? Oh, well, this is one of plenty. I guess this will have to work. Hopefully sharp enough. Um, we're probably going to go for the booty. <laughs> that's what I like to call it. All right, so you guys can see. All right, so you can see it has give, especially here, because it's retaining a lot of heat right here. So I'm going to try to hold on here, and we're going to go down right here. And obviously, if I had a bread knife, this would be so much easier. But it is what it is. It cut. All right, you see the steam coming out of that. And here is your crumb. That's what the crumb is looking like. Beautiful. I'll show you the crumb on the loaf. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. And the springiness on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right, and you best believe straight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys can hear that crunch. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now cross. Excuse me. It's phenomenal. You guys need to try it. It is beautiful. I leave you guys with that. That just looks gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. So, guys, look at that. Sourdough. Discard sandwich loaf bread you can't get any better than that 
America is just phenomenal. This recipe is beautiful. I think you guys should definitely try it. It is not my recipe, but it is a beautiful recipe. And I think you guys definitely, definitely should try it. So, if I can get to it, I will definitely tag the person whose recipe this belongs to. I hope it belongs to her. I've been following her recipe for a while. My family loves this recipe. And I will guarantee you that this loaf here is going to be devoured with dinner tonight. Um, but as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And we will see you in another video, whether it's in the kitchen or in the garden. But the garden is dormant, so we will see you again probably in the kitchen or talking about some seeds in a catalog. Stay blessed, and until the next one, bye. Mm -hmm.